This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. And Alyssa Orange joining us from the Pig Trail Nation. <clears throat> That describes an animal house. You know, all the cast of characters that you work with over there at Pig Trail Nation, Alyssa. Would that? Uh, would, could you describe it as an animal house, just like the song by Stephen Bishop from the movie? <laughs> maybe a little. We're maybe a little structured than that. <laughs> <laughs> but the characters, they are. The characters, they are. Absolutely. That would make you. That would make you one of them. I'm not sure exactly which character you would exactly. be. Maybe Karen Allen. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, I asked a question earlier in uh, in the show today, uh, one that's for fans, and I don't think we, we, we necessarily are going to go in that direction. It's, are you past the A&M game yet? You know, I think, I think some fans are, and even those that say they are, there's still a little bit of the pit in the stomach left over from it. Uh, the question that I had for you is four weeks into the season, we've seen them for a month. They have a, a worse record than at this time last year. I still think that 2022 Arkansas is better than 2021 Arkansas, and I gave some reasons why. What do you think? Is this year's team better, what you've seen these first four games, or no, and why? Um, yeah, I think they are. I, I think I'm going to agree with you. Um, I think that they have a glaring problem in the secondary, and we're fooling ourselves if we if we don't see that. But I think that this team as a whole is much more well-rounded than the team last year. And I think that's why that makes them better, right? So everyone keeps pointing to Traylon Burks. Well, now we know that, you know, he's got a uh, – K.J. Jefferson's got a lot of weapons around him in the wide receiver room than just one or two guys. Now you've got a very much improved – Trey Knox at tight end, and you have a run game right now that I think anyone, you ask any other coach in college football, Arkansas's run game is their strength. Defensively, the front is better. The linebackers have taken a step up. It's truly just that secondary that has been their Achilles heel, and I think that that is not enough to say that this team is worse than that team last year. I do worry about about the fumbles in, in the last couple of games. I mean, KJ doesn't have a history of fumbling a lot. Yeah. Neither does Rocket Sanders. No. Uh, and it's the it's really it's also the places, the spots on the field where 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 two yeah. of the turnovers have happened. I yeah. mean, when they come inside the yeah. five yard line and you're about to go in for a touchdown, that's that's different than just sure. you know giving the ball away. There's an emotional toll that that takes and boy was that was that ever obvious on saturday so I mean, they gotta have to fix the yeah. turnovers and and create turnovers defensively because i thought that was going to be a calling card of this defense and it hasn't been for the last two weeks right exactly uh, yeah i definitely think it's concerning i think the one against texas a&m with kj at the three yard line was kj just trying to do too much you don't have to jump there if, if, if the QB sneak isn't there. That's okay. Try again. Um, and he'll learn from that. The other two that were at Missouri State down there in the red zone, um, you know, Rocket Sanders obviously came back to the sideline and says, that's on me. I'm going to make up for it. And he did in that third quarter. Obviously, uh, you wish you had both of those things back. But I think this team understands that ball security is huge. They practice it all the time in practice. Um you hope that you learn from it and you move on and you don't see it again. If we continue to see it, now that's two games in a row, we continue to see it, ask me two weeks from now, well, yeah, that's that's a big concern. What is actually going on here? I'm really surprised about the turnovers as well. Uh, we always pick a player of the game during our Pig Trail Game Day show, and I picked Dwight McLaughlin last week because I thought, I said, look, this game is going to be – um, decided by turnovers. He had two interceptions the first two weeks of the season, kind of like last year with Busta Brown. That interception at the end of the game really still did for Arkansas. I, I was anticipating a defensive turnover to be the decisive key in that game. Unfortunately, it was Texas A&M's defensive uh, turnover that capitalized. But I want to see more of that. I'm surprised that we haven't yet. 
And I don't know if it's because Miles Slusher and Jalen Catalan were gone. So now you have Miles Slusher back. You had him back last week. Now you have him back for another week. We'll see if that changes a little bit. Well, and, and, and also one thing that we'll learn about the team, and it's based upon how they play on Saturday. And, I mean, look, you could, you could play well against Alabama and still lose, you know, because that's, that's Alabama. They've beaten plenty of teams that yeah. have played well but yeah. not well enough. But what we're about to learn is, you know, how resilient this team can be. And I felt like we, yeah. we saw some of that in the Missouri State game. You know, to throw away the idea was an FCS team. That was a good football team that they were down 17 yeah. points to and then were yeah. down 10 in the fourth and still managed to come from behind and win. And I thought that showed some resilience, but they won the game. There's mm-hmm. nothing quite, uh, you know, as revealing um, about, sure. you know, about I mean, when you play a poor game. Like, I didn't think Arkansas played poorly, terribly against A&M. Mm-hmm. But we'll find, how, we'll find right. out how resilient they are. Maybe not just this week, yeah. but the next two, three weeks, because, man, it's a gauntlet that you're facing exactly. for these next three weeks. Exactly, and I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I don't think they've played horrible against a and at all. I frankly think that Arkansas is the better team. They showed it right off the bat, and then some things went the wrong way, and, you know, the momentum, I mean, the momentum, you could feel it in the building, even in the press box, shifted to the A&M sideline. They got it back and then lost it at that field goal kick. But here's the deal. The reason why I think we're going to see a team that can bounce back and put that Alabama game behind them is because Sam Pittman is the head coach. And up until we see it, I don't think that Sam is going to allow his team to mentally be stuck in week four of the season. This is week five of the season. It's Alabama. It's a much bigger task. And like it's coach speak, I get it. Don't let one loss turn into two, turn into three. Um, But I think that this is something that they can bounce back from. And so I am very, very interested to see how fast they come out because I don't think that they play badly, like you mentioned. I mean, look back at Georgia and people go, well, they lost four in a row last year. That Georgia beating was completely different in than I think Texas A&M. And that had a little bit more of a hangover heading into, you know, Ole Miss and then Auburn, where you gotta, you have a lot to hang your hat on in this Texas A&M game. Two things go a different direction and you win that ball game. I don't think that they're going to be as hungover against this one as they were last year after Georgia. Mm, yeah, let's say you, you say, you know, just a few things just went wrong. What, what would we be talking about right now if, say, Arkansas had won the game? But what would be our major storylines instead of looking at everything wrong? What, 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 what would you, what, how do you think this conversation would be going right now if Arkansas, if Cam Little had made that field goal? Sure. Control of the West, 100%. Not saying it's gone because things can happen. You can beat Alabama, Texas A&M can lose. Uh, a lot of things can go away, but it is absolute control of the SEC West. It's it's heading to Atlanta. And so that's the storyline right now is if they would have won, it's how if you beat Alabama, you control the West right now. Now that they've lost it, what does the avenue look like to still get to to Atlanta? And it's a lo- it's tougher, obviously. Mm. You've, you've really got to win out the rest of your SEC games. Um, but I really think it would have just been more about a control. All right, here you go. You know, you're picked to finish third in the West. Texas A&M and Alabama were picked ahead of you. You've taken down one. Now you got to take down the other one. Now it's now you got to see if you can take down Alabama. See if some other teams can take down A&M and then control what you can control the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. And taking down Alabama in the month of October is very hard. And Coach Saban is 52 and three in the month of October <laughs> as Al- as Alabama's head coach. Now we saw what A&M did to them. Last year, we were able to get the upset. Sure. Just that would have been in week six, I believe. Yeah, that was uh, uh, mm-hmm. one more week past the, where they're playing now. But y- you look at some of the things when Alabama does trip up, it is normally away from the friendly confines of Ryan Denny Stadium. How, how big of an impact yeah. do you think that this crowd can be uh, on Alabama, especially on Bryce Young, who's yeah. only played, I think, four or five true yeah. road games in his career? 
Well, that's going to be huge. Um, I think this is uh, the, the best recipe right now for Arkansas to win this game is the fact that it is at home. And the fact that we have seen the crowd be impactful already this season, right? We have seen the false start calls. We have seen the delay of games because it is so loud in that stadium. You go back to that Cincinnati game when there was a fumble right there in uh, Bearcat territory, and they were able to stop them in a three and out and make them kick a field goal. I mean, that was a huge defensive stand, and a lot had to do with crowd noise and how loud it was. So that's going to be really, really important. But I also think, that every team is beatable. No one is unbeatable. I mean, I can go and give some praise to my Dolphins who beat the Bills, who quite frankly have a very electric offense, and no one after two weeks in the NFL season thought they could be stopped, and then they were. So everyone is beatable, right? You just have to be able to play pretty much perfect football and do not beat yourself like you did a week ago. That's how you beat Alabama. I mean, I go back to, I believe it was 2013, and Alabama was here. It was rainy. That game, Alabama won 14-13 because Arkansas missed an extra point, and Cody Walker had a turnover in the end zone that ended up as a touchback. That that touchdown count, they win that game 20-14. to So anything is possible. Yeah, that's what guys were saying yesterday on the, uh, on the press conference. Uh, we had uh, basketball pressers um, in the last couple of days. Must spoke. Uh, Mike Neighbors talked, and mm-hmm. it kind of crept up on us too. You know, we we, we talked about yeah. basketball in August, men's basketball because of the European trip. But it's, I mean, it's like it's like four and a half weeks away, Alyssa, and and, yeah. and right now, and it, I know people are excited about basketball. I think both teams will have good years. Men's basketball certainly looks like mm-hmm. the, you know, it could be a Final Four contender. I think the women's team is going to be exciting too. But it's. I mean, mm-hmm. it feels a little bit different than 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 in recent <laughs> years. You know, even last yeah. year there was still mm-hmm. like, you know, basketball's approaching, man. It's coming. I don't sense that right now. It's all football. Yeah, it is, and it's because it's the way that the team is playing. I mean, look, and I and I've even said this in our room with my team. Like, it's unfortunate. Okay, so not necessarily unfortunate, but football is playing so well right now. And there's so many eyes on football that you haven't been able to give too much love to basketball, women's basketball, shoot, even the volleyball team, giving them shout outs when we can because they're playing so well, soccer. So, you know, it, I understand the focus gets taken away when you got three minutes to do a sports cast and football is all everyone is talking about. Um, but believe me, basketball is still, <laughs> it's still in the forefront of everybody's mind and everyone is really excited to see this team. And I think it's because what we saw with their European tour in August that kind of that was like a like a you know amuse bouge of of basketball season, and now we want the full course, right? So I'm excited. I, I feel like there's an energy, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like you know there's still that okay, basketball season's right around the corner, even though football is playing well right now. Yeah, they are, and baseball's got a scrimmage, the fall the fall classic they're calling it yeah. on Friday, and. It's not in front of mind for a lot of people, but I sure as heck are going to be there. I'm not going to miss that thing, and maybe I'll see you there, Lisa. If not, I'll see you on Saturday at the football game. Thanks for coming on. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today, or use your mobile device to join today and. Make Make your first sports bet. Use our promo code Believe Fifty to receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's Believe B L E A V fifty. That's Believe B L E A V five zero. Bet online where the game starts.